So I, I have a bunch of pretty good articles, I think. I'm going to try to show you how there's like patterns going on as far as surveillance and different themes. The first one I have here is uh, FBI seeks video recognition technology to automatically ID suspects. And we just covered this about the uh, using uh, they say video recognition technology, You're talking about facial recognition most likely. But I just covered this. Britain face scanning screens that can determine your age and gender. And they'll be uh, basically watching you as you pay for your gas. And this is in Tesco in Britain and 450 gas stations. FBI is weighing, they're weighing to use, it's a matter of money and stuff, the use of video recognition technology to identify suspects even if all the cameras uh, has captured is a perpetrator's limp or fraying blue baseball cap. They said that it can be uh, helpful in things like the Boston Marathon bombing. So I guess that, uh, you know, they always do that. They always use these types of um, scenarios, you know, where the subjects are lone shooters or lone bombers. Um, in that case, I think they had their brother associated with, with it, but it was still, there's a, it's always a little um, sketchy. You know, the guy was shot, or he was uh, in the mouth or whatever, he couldn't talk, just like the recent suspects. That's what we'll get into as well. Putin proposes using smart cameras to identify immigrants, so it could be for terrorists over here, for immigrants in Russia, it's like whatever, right? So they want to use government, the uh, government wants to use smart cameras to identify immigrants to keep, keep track of many migrant workers from the Soviet states. So supposedly they're actually cracking down on uh, immigrants over there in Russia and immigration um, as a whole. So, I mean, they're taking something that's a concern of the people. But, uh, you know, it's like everything else with all the surveillance that you're hearing about NSA. And they're focusing on, ooh, South America and Brazil and Germany and all this crap. And it's really just diverting attention from the fact that everybody in America and the citizens, that's who it's really being used for. Um, you know, it's being used for the citizens to basically maintain the, the natural flow of the order. Made in China kitchen appliances are found to contain hidden Wi-Fi circuitry that installs malware on your home network. So as far as your appliances uh, spying on you, shouldn't be a surprise. This was covered uh, what, back in March of 2012 and the CIA chief, I believe it was Petraeus, will spy on you through your dishwasher. Basically saying anything that connects to your internet from your television to your car navigation systems, your light switches, and that could be used to spy on them. So at a summit uh, for Incutel, so the CIA's venture capital firm, which brought you Facebook, where all these people, naive people, go on there and post like their weapons permit. We'll get into that. Um, firearms permit on Facebook. They'll say things on Facebook and joke about it, and all of a sudden they'll get a visit by the feds, and they take that stuff seriously. Uh, because that's what it was made for. Well, speaking of diverting attention, iPads banned have been banned from cabinet meetings over surveillance fears. It says, uh, Crypticon says, oh yeah, China, Russia, Iran, and Pakistan, wink. The security services fear foreign intelligence agencies had developed the ability to turn mobile devices such as phones and tablets into bugs without the owner's knowledge, allowing them to eavesdrop on confidential meetings. They were used this week during a presentation by Francis Ma, the cabinet office minister. But after the presentation, they were swiftly removed by uh, No 10 security staff to prevent cabinet discussions being picked up, according to a report from the Mail, Daily Mail on Sunday. It is feared that China, Russia, Iran, Pakistan have developed the ability to turn mobiles into microphones and turn them into transmitters, even though when they're turned off, yeah, using a Trojan computer virus. So, yeah. Uh, these phones are already doing that, and most people are already acclimated to incorporating them as an extension of their uh, body, uh, their body, into society. So you know that's you know, as far as invasion of privacy taken to a new level. It's you know this changes our notions of secrecy. So you can't complain if you're volunteering, you're participating in it with all the smartphones and microphones, and keeping them in the room on the table when people are trying to have a private conversation with you because it's no longer private. Um, that's if you can hold a conversation, like I said before. If you can actually hold a conversation with people without them dabbling with their cell phones for longer than five minutes, they, I don't know, they deserve a medal or something. 
but uh, it goes on here and says that the next generation internet using abundant low cost high power computing says Petraeus he later went on uh, says now we're going to cloud computing in many areas greater and greater supercomputing and ultimately heading to quantum computing yeah a good example of, of that is this video that somebody uh, uh, linked to me I forgot my phone from August of this year says, uh, thanks to the continued uh, miniaturization of technology, snooping devices and those designed to disrupt wireless operations are proliferating at an unbelievable pace. According to the Daily Mail, Russian investigators say they have discovered hidden microchips in Chinese-made household appliances that have been imported into the country designed to transmit spam and other malware into wireless networks. They discovered 20 to 30 kettles and irons that contain spy chips that send some data to the foreign service said it's not been a good year for Russian espionage. Word of the Chinese chips comes as the European Union launched an investigation into the claims that Moscow has bought gifts it sent to delegates at the last month's G27 in order to uh, steal data from computers and cell phones. The FBI monitored anti-war website, that's antiwar.com, I get a decent amount of news from there, it's a pretty good website. It says, in air for six years, documents show monitoring began after antiwar.com editor passed along to the Bureau a threat he received against his own website. They said the agents mistakenly believed that it had threatened to hack the Bureau's own site. But it says, yeah, antiwar never threatened to hack the FBI, and that's how they carried it out, right? And um, this was an air. That's, that's what they say. It was an air. So eyewitnesses say he saw the New Jersey mall shooter with a group of people with multiple guns. Type that in. You can check out the video. It's like 13 minutes long. And uh, that's from Blacklisted News. So just type in, pause this, type that in, and you can watch that video. But again, this is like the same thing. Uh, like always, there's always some kind of conspiracy behind it. I'm not saying that it's not true. It's just that it just continues. So... This guy's Paul Anthony's name. There, people are already recognizing it. CIA and CIA or CIANCIA, however his name is pronounced. But there's some people that actually said that this guy was actually from the Boston bombing. He was one of the um, crisis actors. So I'm sure that there's movies out there. I'm, there's probably seen one where um, where basically people who are willing to talk about that stuff. Maybe he was willing to say something. Uh, they all of a sudden they become lone shooters in the news and how would you like to have your picture painted all across the news and having everybody come for you all this police state apparatus militarized police set up I mean 200 officers they had I mean they had a swarm of officers I remember reading the article about that when it happened the people specifically said I couldn't believe the amount of officers that were here like a commenter said um, you know all they have to do is just you know like a loud explosion or um, or you just go around like the guy did, supposedly, and started firing off shotgun shells. Everybody got scared shitless, right? And just scamper. But just like Zarniev, uh, the New Jersey mall shooter is found dead with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So yeah, uh, dead guys don't talk just like the, um, like the uh, uh, dummy that was being wheeled in a wheelchair after the LAX shooter. Actually, he was a TSA agent, but also the dummy that they said was the body of the shooter. So yeah, it is kind of hard to keep up with all this stuff. This is uh, September 30th, so almost October 1st, a New York shooting suspect body found in the Hudson River. The body of a suspected workplace shooter was pulled from the Hudson River on Monday. And this is after Westgate, right? In, uh, in what was it, Kenya, I believe? And that kind of died down. Um, they were already, they already got operations going in Al-Qaeda there in Mali and they're already carrying out drone strikes and stuff in Somalia and that. Uh, they're getting ready to press forward with more operations, building up a Lebanese or uh, Libyan army. So all the African na uh, operations are going forward with the whole Kenya thing. But uh, got a little bad press when they realized that the actual government, the military troops of Kenya and that uh, were going around looting. <laughs> they're caught on camera, so. But now it's before Christmas, the holiday season, so let's go ahead and scare the shit out of people, right? ramp up that fear and so somebody asked me what I thought it's, it's what I meant to actually title the last video it's not so much about gun control because people are psychologically controlling 
their guns. I mean, like I said, you could have a gun, you could have bullets, but with the Zimmerman trial, it taught people to be careful before you pull that trigger. In fact, don't pull that trigger because your life will end through lawsuits and court trials and your wife will divorce you, you lose your job. I don't think it's so much about that as it is it's about creating fear. And I do believe that, uh, you know, when people are in fear, in constant fear, they have to keep that going, that um, you're more easily mind controlled or controlled, right? So, but they have to keep it going. Uh, you have to give a dose of fear at least once a month. But it is kind of good on the flip side because it shows that people are starting to become more aware. You know, uh, how malls plan to keep shoppers safe this holiday. Well, I wonder how. Retailers will need to perform the delicate task of calming concerns without fanning any fears. And they've been doing this by practicing evacuation training drills throughout the year, performing sh active shooter training drills with the police. Ah, see, they even say it. Local police have become more active in creating informational materials, including videos and portraits. Also, like the, like the kids on the bus, they just scare the shit out of people. A lot of times they don't even announce it, that it's an actual training exercise, which is good because when you want to paste it across the mainstream media and call it real, it, you know, everybody, hey, I thought it was real. Lodi High School lockdown follows active shooter threat. Search reveals no weapon for November 6th in New Jersey. Keep the fear going. Then here, cops say charges are filed after a robber with a fake gun foiled by a clerk with a real gun. And that's in gun free, gun free zone, uh, Chicago. But I believe they have changed their laws recently. Um, DC averaged one gunshot, gunshot incident every two hours for the past years. So talk about you know, taking care of your own house there in D.C. where they write the laws, you know. Actually, the lawmakers don't live there. They live in uh, the Ritchie parts. I don't know if it's called Fairfax or whatever, but they live in the Ritchie parts of Virginia and outlying districts of D.C. Young Detroit women shot dead upon seeking assistance after a car accident. They're seeking charges. The police are at a Michigan resident for shooting and killing a 19-year-old Detroit woman who sought help at the resident's house after a car accident early uh, Saturday morning. Police added that she was supposedly believed to have been an intruder and shot in self-defense. Well, Detroit's pretty bad right now, so if somebody came running to your door in the middle of the night or something like that, uh, I could see why that would happen. Maybe you thought of some crackhead or something. Not defending their actions, but again, it's all about the fear. So if people are in fear, they don't, you know, they don't communicate with active shooters. Why, not, why don't they just try to talk to the guy? Why don't they question why we're producing people like this in society if it is really happening? They're not all hoaxes. This story I never covered on GGN. I covered it on my other website. October 17th, an Arkansas man shot dead after getting lost in Chicago. He said he got lost driving around the city, was shot and killed early Thursday, apparently by a man he had just asked for directions. Friendly Chicago. An Army veteran was banned from daughter's school after posting picture of weapons permit, says a report. So, like I said, don't post this stuff on Facebook, man. <laughs> you know, po uh, said her, her concealed weapons permit she posted to Facebook. She was approached by a police officer from the County Board of Education and was warned that she was about to get a criminal trespass warning. So, it says here the officer told her that the principal at the school was scared of her and did not want her on the school property, she told the station. So, just like I said, that's what the armed guards are going to be there for. That's what the beefed up security at the school shootings are going to create. They're going to create it so that parents aren't able to go and get their children from the re education camps when they want to. Like I've mentioned many times before, you'll see this in the future where you'll have these, not mega cities, but uh, mega schools where they're actually cities. They'll be boarded, boarded there, but they'll be more like, you know, apartments and so and you'll have to have your kid in them and most people will be too busy working that they'll they'll welcome it and they'll get visitation rights on the weekend of their kids who don't really want to see them their parents don't really want to see them anymore and uh, they'll be raised completely by social engineers so but if you are forced into having your child in one of these places and they start you know performing abortions at the school and and start euthanizing people and uh, start teaching them about sex education when they're like four years old that and you're not for that you might want to actually by force go in there and get your child out of there I, this is extreme view but I'm just saying down the road you can picture where they would take this they will have armed guards they have all the security and it'll all be built off what through conservatives saying arm the teachers and arm guards and all this along with, of course, you know, the left and liberals. 
uh, pressing for whatever they press for. Anyways, I thought I'd get more in here, but I'll just bust it into three videos. Uh, thank you for joining me for Wednesday, November 6th. This is GGN.